Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with episode number 19 of the Tottenham Career Mode. And as you can see, just 24 hours after playing Newcastle, we are 24 hours away from our next game and 48 hours away from the game after that. Now I went on a little bit of a rant about uh, the fixed congestion, etc. last episode, so uh, I'll try and stay away from that in this one. But uh, as you can see, we are sixth in the table on 50 points, just one behind Newcastle with a game in hand as we head into the opening game of this particular episode against Everton, a team that gave us a really Real, real good game at Goodison Park earlier on in the season. You'll notice, actually, the goalkeeper missed that chance from Defoe. It was actually the defender sliding in behind him that blocked the shot that stopped him from going into the back of the net. So a really, really good defending from Everton. And again there at the back post with the hook clearance from uh, from Leighton Baines. And Everton a really, really strong side. And obviously because, as we mentioned, uh, we're having a lot of games at, uh, at the minute in uh, short succession. So uh, we have a very, very tired squad. As we head into the game after this you'll be able to see just what sort of uh, fitness issues I'm having to deal with as we uh, as we head towards the European game in the, in the, well, 24 hours after this one, to be completely honest. But again there, Everton defending very, very solidly, getting another block on the shot just before half-time. So uh, we are actually only at 1-0, and then there's a bit of a goal mouse scramble here. Fortunately, it's us getting the goal line block in this time to keep things at 1-0 as we head into the half time break so uh, a decent first half chances at both ends but uh, it was that will cut back from Defoe to Capu, Capu, Capu a bit of a sweaty goal maybe perhaps but Defoe did the work by pushing around the outside and we wholly deserved a goal from that move as a whole so uh, they made a change brought on Aruna Kone for Nikitsi Jelovic this is a good change being on pace and strength and uh, I brought on Gilfie Sigurdsson to, uh, to kind of freshen things up oh, on the left hand side and uh, it was actually Sandro that was going to get the first chance in the second half Defoe involved again he seems to be instrumental obviously we were trying to move him on in the January transfer window and uh, the we ran out of time basically Stuttgart couldn't tie up a contract in time before the uh, the deadline day uh, countdown finished so Defoe stayed at Tottenham and he's been a very very good player for us actually almost more so since uh, he stayed on maybe trying to prove a point to me more so than anyone else but as you can see this is the state of the squad as we head into the game against standard liaison in the Europa League just 24 hours after the, uh, the game against Everton. The first team uh, that I'm playing in this one actually didn't play any part in the Everton game. They played against, was it Newcastle the game before this or Norwich? Uh, my memory fails me. I think it was Norwich actually but that was just two days before the Everton game. So uh, three days after that they haven't to play another game this first team against Standard Liège. Could have had a penalty there as the player went down in the box. Really really uh, dubious decision not to give one but nonetheless Nani's going to have a great shot from distance across the goalkeeper into that far bottom corner just on the half time mark now Nani's signing was uh, it was the, the response to which was half and half in the comments some of you said he's a good player and a couple of you said he was a waste of time and money now uh, admittedly in real life he is a very much hot and cold player but on FIFA he is shall we say effective he is fast he is strong enough and he's got great feet and a decent shot on him and Soldado with a decent shot there fantastic reactions to be able to squeeze that inside the uh, the near post after Paulinho's shot was initially blocked by the defender there's really not much of an angle to go for their first time on his weak foot absolutely spectacular stuff from Roberto but they were going to pull one back here that's the uh, mistake from David Alaba there turning inside after winning the ball plays in Boyens and it's another tight angle goal really good uh, finish there from Mpoku sliding in at the back post I think Mpoku's Belgian uh, I'm not entirely too sure for some reason I just have flashbacks to FM 20 10 maybe when I was Belgian national team manager anyway moving forward in this one and we're actually going to make it three here Ericsson pretty similar goal to uh, to Nani's actually breaking into the box on the right hand side cutting it back across the goalkeeper inside that far post into the side netting and that made it three and then just before uh, just before full time Paloni is going to get the break of the uh, the drop on the ball from the shot from Lamella that's blocked a couple of goals actually came from uh, block shots here the uh, the Soldado one and the Paloni one just a, a fortuitous turn of events as it fell to his feet of course that was the second leg of that game we won the first leg 2-0 away in Belgium so in correct we progress forward into the next round of the Europa League as you can see against Spartak Moscow coming up soon uh, so uh, that's definitely going to be pretty difficult but before we get to those games we've got two huge games in the Premier League coming up Arsenal at home which is going to be the next one in this episode and of course as you can see Chelsea away in the next one as well but before we get to that we're actually going to have a look at the international management things we get uh, an offer from Wales here now I was genuinely tempted just for Gareth Bale just like with Portugal you might be tempted just for Ronaldo uh, to pick this one up but I decided to reject it 
as uh, you know at the end of the day it's not going to get us anywhere and then the Russian offer you guys decided not to take that one you wanted me to not take the one so I have subsequently rejected that offer and we won't be taking the Russian, na the Russian national team to the World Cup but just as we get past all the fixture congestion the FA decides to give us an FA Cup tie quarter final no less just 48 hours after the game against Spartak Moscow but let's push that aside let's concentrate on the game at hand which is of course the second North London derby of the season now we lost the the first one at the Emirates 1-0 to a Theo Walcott diving header so we really really want to get some revenge here and also as you can see we're only two points behind them and uh, if we can win this one we will go up into those Champions League spots which is absolutely superb if we can manage to get that because of course the uh, the board want us to finish in the Champions League I want to play in the Champions League as a, as a football manager so uh, we definitely want to be ensuring that we're able to get at least a draw out of this if not a victory but Arsenal we're going to get the first chance of the game here Mesut Ertzel normally fantastic with that left foot this time left to uh, left a little bit wanting with that finish the pressure from the defender on the shoulder perhaps just enough to uh, to put him off and make him pull the shot just wide but Soldado is going to play a gorgeous ball inside two defenders for Nasser Chobli to run onto and that is a wonderful finish absolutely spectacular fantastic strike too much power on it for uh, for Wojciech Chesney I thought when it, it first went in that it went right into the top corner but it actually didn't as you can see from the replay it went straight through Chesney just couldn't cope with the uh, ferocity on the shot and it flew into the back of the net and they're actually going to pick up a free kick on the edge of the box here Alaba can't quite get to the ball first just flicks the uh, the feet of is it Karim Benzema on the edge of the box I think it is and uh, then Santi Gazzola is actually going to take the free kick here it's uh, going to be kind of a training ground thing try and put me off with a second man he whips it in great free kick off the bar and unfortunately for us it falls to Lauren Koscielny who's on hand to finish the uh, the loose ball into the back of the net with an easy header really on the half hour so they bring it back to 1-1 but the uh, the first half wasn't done there Paulinho's going to show great feet and strength to get away from the defender in all honesty Gorian plays a nice ball into Chadley looking for a second at that top near post shot but unfortunately just couldn't get the accuracy on it and it did fly over the far side but we got a man over here Kyle Walker he's going to run into the box cut the ball back across and Paulinho with the overhead kick going for the uh, going for the outrageous attempt with the overhead kick and I actually thought that was Soldado on that attempt had it been Soldado it probably would have gone in but unfortunately for us it was Paulinho Brazilian-esque with the overhead kick but un-Brazilian-esque with the fact that it was off target so we went in at half time at 1-1 with the impetus of coming out into the second half really wanting to make uh, some moves on the game and really stamp our authority on the uh, on the opposition nanny cutting inside very very nicely from that right hand side unfortunately the uh, the left foot shot whilst accurate enough didn't have enough power on it to uh, to get it inside that far post and the goalkeeper makes a comfortable save but Nasser Chadley turns Bakary Sanya absolutely wonderfully there unfortunately the header is initially cleared but it falls to Freddie Guerri gets it under control and that is a screamer that is absolutely wonderful from Freddie Guerri we brought him in for nine million pounds from Inter Milan and he's been a superstar in that holding midfield role he scored banger after banger and been breaking up the moves going the other way as well I honestly could not have bought a better player I don't know whether that's uh reflects well on me or reflects well on Freddie Guarine but uh, either way he has been a wonderful addition to this squad and really really worth every single penny but Defoe is going to set up Christian Eriksen here how's he missed How's he missed? Defoe does so much work down that right hand side to cut back away from two defenders. Eriksen makes the run from deep. Just put it in the back of the net, mate. Just side foot it into the net and he puts it wide. But fortunately enough, it doesn't cost us. We do take the three points from that. Uh, game against Arsenal and we are above them into the Champions League spots which we'll be able to see in just a second as we flick to the Premier League table as you can see 28 games in there's 10 games left 30 points still available with six points off top so maybe not out of reach who knows we'll have to wait and see what happens in the uh, in the last third of the season but we're doing very very well indeed so far our goal difference isn't the best we're quite away behind those of us or those teams above us and Arsenal below us but crucially we've got more points than Arsenal and we're in the Champions League spot so that's the most important thing right now and obviously with the run of uh, Europa League games coming up an FA Cup quarter final and a game away against Chelsea we've definitely got it all to do in the next episode so do be sure to come back for that subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to make sure that you don't miss it and uh, that will be coming to you tomorrow of course we started the new schedule now for uh, for Karimo Karimo Pac-Man Karimo Karimo Pac-Man squad builder on a Sunday so uh, hopefully that's going down well so far this week 
Uh, I, I may mention that in the beginning of the next commentary for those people that uh, just watched the first bit of the video before getting to the end. But thank you to those of you that did make it to the end. If you have, then please feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. It'd be superb. Like I say, subscribe if you haven't. And if you did miss the previous episode, then feel free to click on the annotation on screen, which will be over the play button. But that is going to wrap it up for me, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.